This video was originally taken with 8mm movie camera film and transferred onto VCR tape in 1986. Different aspects of carrier aviation are depicted in this video. Scenes of the carrier replenishing, catapult and deck takeoffs, formation flying, carrier landings, the landing signal officer, and finally coming home to the Bay Area in 1954. The planes featured are the F-9F Panthers and Cougars, the AD Sky Raider, and the F-4U Corsair. There are many ships that comprise a task force, three to four carriers, several battleships and or cruisers, and many destroyers. On replenishment day, other auxiliary ships joined the task force. In the background you see a carrier. It is also a battleship with a carrier well in the background. These scenes were taken on the USS Philippine Sea CVA 47. Here the Phil C is replenishing the destroyer the USS Buck DD 761. The carrier band would entertain ships alongside during replenishment. Notice how close the ships are to each other. Sometimes just 35 to 40 feet separate the ships. The oiler USS Guadalupe AO32 is transferring personnel over to the carrier. At the same time, she is refueling the Phil C. You will notice on her starboard side there is a destroyer also refueling. Before any air operations, a helicopter takes off and is on station to pick up pilots that might have to ditch. Pilots are manning their planes. During winter, when the sea temperature was below 60 degrees, pilots wore exposure suits to prevent hypothermia in case of having to bail out or ditch in the water. The plane captain is assisting me while getting into the cockpit. He hands me the maps, the target photos, and helps adjust the shoulder straps. On these two planes taxing out, observe these bombs underneath the wings. These planes are F-9F Panthers, the Navy's premier carrier jet during the Korean War. The Panthers are catapulted off the Phil C. Notice the 47 painted up forward on the flight deck. These scenes are taken off the Hornet. This gentleman is called the catapult officer. You will notice how his shirt is blowing in the wind. We needed about 35 knots of wind across the deck. Notice how quickly planes could be catapulted off. This is an interesting one. Watch 304 there on the port cat. He will get a sort of a weak shot. He goes down below the carrier. And the cat officer looks at him. He takes a look. He comes back this way and then takes a double look to see if that plane had gone into the water. This is an F9F6 Cougar jet. The Cougar jet was a swept wing version of the Panther. It's very comparable to the U.S. Air Force's F-86 Sabre jet. Notice the 12 on the bow of the uh, deck, carrier deck. This is the Hornet. These are Cougars once again, the swept wing version of the Panther. We're going to have an interesting scene 
uh, very shortly. The number one elevator, which is that rectangle right below the 12, it will be down while one of the Panther jets is being catapulted off. Whether this was a mistake, I'm not sure. I don't think that was standing standard operating procedure. There it is. The elevator is down. The wheels were very close to that elevator. These planes are the AD Sky Raider, an outstanding attack plane used during Korea and Vietnam. These planes carried a heavier bomb load than most of the big bombers in World War II. Prop planes usually deck launch but could be catapulted if necessary. This AD must have something wrong as it is being lowered to the hangar deck by the number two elevator. Note that the propeller is still rotating. This is the F4U Corsair used in World War II in Korea. Same type of plane featured in the TV series Baba Black Sheep, the Marine Fighter Squadron during World War II. A flight of Panther jets, a fighter squadron VF-91, fly over Hawaii a few days before going to Korea. The Panther was featured in the movie Bridges at Toko Ri. This is called an echelon formation. Notice how close the planes are to each other with overlapping wingtips. It was difficult flying left-handed while shooting the film with the right hand over the left shoulder. Occasionally you might see the reflection of my hand on the stick reflecting off of the canopy. There's the reflection of the hand. You can really see the stick right there. Down below you will see some of the ships in Task Force 77. Sometimes they say the carrier looks like a postage stamps. It looked like a half a postage stamps. We're going to have carrier landings. There were 12 resting wires and three barriers on the Essex class carriers. That plane came a little bit too high and too fast. And notice how far up the deck it rolled. Pilots would try to catch the number two or number three wire. It was best if the pilot touched down near the center line. You will see several good landings and several not so good. This was a good one. Notice where he stopped. Sometimes these planes would only travel about a hundred feet and they would come to a complete stop. The next shot will be of a plane that comes in too high and too fast and notice where he rolls. He possibly catches about the number six wire. He's on top of the number three elevator at that particular time. I try to approach around 122 knots, which works out to approximately being 140 miles per hour. The prop planes came in about 30 to 35 knots slower than the jets. This is the Corsair. Watch where it touches down. This is a lousy landing. It's almost in the port catwalk. So happens he was my closest friend aboard the carrier. Watch the plane coming in. Here we have a wave off. The deck was not clear so the pilot had to go around and try again. We will see the landing signal officer waving off a few planes in a moment. This is a Panther jet was a photo plane. These shots were taken down on the LSO platform. The landing signal officer stands on a platform aft on the port side. There normally would be two or three LSOs and several enlisted personnel in that area. Each approach and landing is graded. The LSO, LSO signals pilots using two paddles. Watch the two men in the lower right hand corner. They will duck down as the plane touches down. The reason? If the wire broke, there was a chance that they could be decapitated. It's a Corsair coming in. We don't see the touchdown. Finally, upon conclusions of the air ops, the Angel lands back on board. Finally, the dream of all servicemen coming home. This is aboard the Hornet in 1954. We are passing under the Golden Gate Bridge. 
It was a dark and dreary day in December, but all of us were warm at heart. Notice the skyline of San Francisco. Back then, as it compared to now, a lot of missing tall buildings you will not see. We have passed, already passed under the Bay Bridge. Finally heading into Pier 3. The other carrier you see on the right-hand side of the pier is the USS Oriskany CVA-34, a sister ship of the Phil C and the Hornet. Down on the pier you see relatives and friends of all the crew. And to finalize this video, I am focusing in on my immediate family, Right in the middle of the screen, you will see them walking. My uncle, my parents, uncle, aunt, cousins, and all of that. It was good to be back home again.